Hey everyone, this is Meg with another current release game review, and today I'm going to be talking about Tomb Raider 2013. An impressive origin story and character arc from young woman to hardened survivor that will carry you throughout the deep narrative experience. A brutal game of survival set to a backdrop of vast and complex levels. There are puzzles aplenty, heated combat scenarios to survive, an all new raiding experience as advertised on the box. A focus on items and customizable weapons are also stressed to enhance the realistic survivalist play. A multiplayer experience to take the franchise in new directions to give players a chance to play together in the gritty verse of Tomb Raider 2013. So does the game live up to the sales pitch? Let's take a closer look. Ah, the narrative. It's been praised across the board by most critics for good voice acting, well-executed character arcs, and all I have to say is... Huh? Lara Croft does indeed have a character arc in this game, but it's not necessarily convincing. I think part of this might be down to the fact that there's very little setup of her character. It is hard to establish a good character arc if there's no real starting point. I mean, how did she get to point B if there is no point A? A few tidbits are referenced here and there, but it's as if the players are expected to know who Lara is already without any background work, which doesn't make much sense in a redefining origin story, which by definition should re-establish what we thought we already knew about a character or a world. Another jarring note was the descent or Kill Bill formula that had been applied to this story but simply didn't fit. And whereas Sarah and the bride from said films had to quickly shed their humanity to defeat monstrous foes, or literal monsters, to make it out alive, these brutal experiences destroyed these characters in some way, despite their survival. The experiences in this game, however, made Lara want more adventure by the end, and I'd describe her experiences as more a torment than an adventure. I would have thought that the girl who wants an adventure in the beginning would feel the exact opposite by the end. But as far as the writing is concerned, there were points in the game that I felt were downright logical. There are several points in the story, for example, where a stealthy Lara could have planted an arrow right between the unshielded villain's eyes, but didn't, instead opting for non-threatening stragglers dotted around the set. Why? For the same reason she thought it a good idea to burn the bag she was tightly tied into, or trust a complete stranger who looks about as trustworthy as Rasputin. Himiko's name is dropped more times than I can count in the game. Lara should know more about this than anyone. Yet when she's faced with a stone female idol, she can't possibly imagine who it is. Nor can she fathom who might be leaving gifts at her shrine, even though she's come across several strange uh, ritualistic people whose hobbies include stringing people up and stealing helpless descendants. She starts off not unconfident with potential, but oblivious. Survival instincts play such a huge part of the gameplay, yet it never really enters the narrative, save for all of the characters drumming home that Lara needs to trust said instincts. But by the time she does, so many disastrous turns could have been avoided that this 180 irritated. I mean, talk about a day late and a dollar short. I was also expecting a kind of Clint Eastwood Unforgiven style of deep reflection concerning her first kill, which she bounces back from almost immediately. And this is merely acknowledged later on in the game, it felt kind of sloppy. And then, in one of the bigger moments in game, it's somewhat cheapened by a throwback to a far more impressive heroine of movies past, and so lacked any impact that I found it almost amusing. And these are only a few examples, but don't get me wrong, I really, really wanted to love this character arc. If any of you have read my blog, you'll know that some of my favourite characters in fiction include a flawed Sarah Connor, the T2 edition, gender-neutral Ellen Ripley from the Alien franchise, unassuming Marge Gunderson from Fargo, or Carolyn Fry from Pitch Black, a woman who goes from almost murdering her passengers <laughs> to valuing every human life in her charge, up to and including Riddick. In comparison to these elite, well-developed characters, Lara Croft is somewhat lacking. The vocal performance didn't add any personality either. And in a game where we should be rooting for a character, we need personality in any form. I will say though that her pain screams and grunts were more than convincing. Unfortunately, the supporting cast of characters 
feels even more forgettable. I don't really remember many of the names. I remember Mike, and I think that might be because of his shirt, which I still think is kind of cool. But even his subplot was kind of poorly built up and executed. The game also relies very heavily on journal entries, like many story-driven games, but here they practically rely on it. I mean, it may as well be labelled the primary narrative. So the core narrative we see through cutscenes and in-game dialogues are bumped down to secondary focus and offers very little at all sans the journals. I also read said entries much faster than the voiceovers, so they almost felt a bit like an intrusion. I was waiting around for them to finish. All in all, I would call the story of Tomb Raider 2013 a missed opportunity. Not an outright failure, but where was the love? Where was the care? Where was the attention? And I so badly wanted to add another female to my list of best fictional characters of all time. The ideas were all there, but when it came down to the execution, a combination of poor development, a patchy evolution of character, illogical plot devices, flat dialogues, and an unforgettable cast all add up, and the total isn't great. I'm actually surprised that this aspect was received so well critically. Level design was spectacular. They weren't large in a Red Dead Redemption kind of way, but they were expertly crafted. No ifs, no buts. Puzzles, or ways to progress, were mildly challenging, certainly not insulting. What I felt was a little insulting was the constant survival instinct prompt. I rejected the option via L2 at every opportunity because I wanted to learn the surroundings myself and overcome said challenges on my own. I didn't want my hand to be held. Perhaps if the instinct suggestion had cropped up after a long period of inactivity, it wouldn't have bothered me so much. But I felt that the player was expected to rely on this instead of actually exploring, enjoying, and mastering the levels themselves. Why give me a fantastic playground if you're not going to let me play? Some moments really brought back the spirit of Tomb Raider. The wolves, for example, put me right back into that moment I was afraid to jump in the pit because I knew some growling beasts awaited me. Enemy AI was aggressive, which really brought the feeling of one woman against insurmountable odds to the forefront. The combat situations kept me constantly moving, constantly on my toes, and paying attention to my surroundings. I felt as though I were really outsmarting my foes with my ninja stealth and perfectly placed headshots. It towed the line beautifully between surviving in a sense and action-packed scenarios. However, the game became combat-reliant in the latter half, which seems strange considering the game was established as a puzzle platforming survival experience. And I have to admit that they became so frequent it began to tire. Stealth sections, areas in which you creep around the dark corners of the complex arenas, arrow aimed just so for a murder-death kill shot, were deliciously enjoyable and in some cases, very challenging. There were several points in which I had to retread my steps or vary up my technique to dispatch of the enemies who outnumbered and outgunned me. These areas were strategic, often required a thoughtful approach, and were tense to play. I almost wish the game was consistently made up of this formula, because areas outside of stealth and combat situations lacked any real tension or atmosphere for me personally. The barrage of QTEs, and cinematic sequences were easily telegraphed and easily passable. I've heard the customising options described as a little uninspired, and I'd have to agree to an extent. I'm ashamed to say that I didn't really think about what I was adding, chopping, or changing, instead just going with it and selecting any old thing. Seeing as you were prompted to beef up certain aspects in light of story progression also took some of the player choice and participation away. A few of the extra salvage upgrades seemed unnecessary, considering the amount you acquire regardless. And other than Lara's first animal kill and early wolf encounters, I never find myself hunting or foraging either. I didn't hate it, but I would have been just fine without this option. I felt that the gameplay was a little lopsided, some of the best elements being stealth, enemy AI, combat tension, which really did shine throughout, were wasted somewhat by sort of stale, shallower features. The visuals are very, very beautiful. It has depth of field, down pat, there's some really interesting architecture, it's highly detailed, very realistic, and it's also a little bit grey. I had a very similar reaction playing this game as I did when I played Resistance Wall of Man. I felt like I was going a little bit colourblind. 
but I can forgive this because of the fantastic landscaping. I love that no matter where you stood in the world, you were given a multi-layered view, completely unique or different from varying perspectives. It further establishes the level design as something worthy of praise. I mean, it may not be the biggest world within video games, but it's the most smartly and strikingly constructed, especially when paths through said areas are so linear. It feels and looks like a jungle gym, and I couldn't wait to climb and traverse the incredible locations. Menu layouts are mature and stylish, and character models are fantastic. The same level of detail in the environments carries over to characters. Their clothes, skin textures, right down to the little flecks of dirt, sweat, and blood, are all very well done. Animation of the character models was a little jaggedy at times, case in point the scrabbling up the mud wall scene toward the beginning of the game, and I swear the same pole through the neck or arrow through the neck or some other sharp implement through the neck animation was looped over and over again. But overall the visuals are detailed, grimy, grotesquely attractive at times, and though the palette sometimes feels drained, it works for this feeling of gritty realism the Crystal Dynamics wanted to create. Through the visuals, they relayed a theme, a feeling, and they stayed true to that feeling. It's what I'd consider to be the most consistent aspect of this game. The musical score was solid during tense combat and stealth situations, but failed to really enhance key moments in the story. Or perhaps instead I should say it failed to create drama or impact where the story lacked, which is a real shame because I feel like the narrative could have used a helping hand. As I said though, it really amped up combat situations with really heavy tribal beats and a very kind of drone orchestral, wait, that makes no sense whatsoever, a heavy drone sound from the orchestra. Jeez. Go home, Megan. Go home. The soundtrack though, epic and grandiose, in my opinion was wasted on the barren story. Sad music, for example, just felt out of place and kind of needless, considering the story drew no real emotion from me. And the soundtrack can't and shouldn't be expected to carry a story. I think this is probably the shortest soundtrack review I've done. People have, for all intents and purposes, completely ignored the multiplayer when writing this title, and for good reason. Though I wouldn't really consider it good reviewing practice, if there is such a thing. But it was very clear from the beginning, the Tomb Raider's multiplayer modes were an experiment, something to try, something that might just add a new flavour to the reboot. So the fact that it misses the mark isn't too much of a buttock, considering the developers weren't exactly promising the Earth to begin with. Either way, I'd give it a pass. Uninspired, bland, uh, lacking in any real substance. In some aspects, I would say that yes, Tomb Raider does deliver, but consistently, not entirely. The biggest shortcoming is, I believe, the narrative. For a game so focused on its core origin story, it offers an arc, but only barely. I mean, there are a surprising amount of brilliantly written female protagonists in fiction. The real crime is that people forget them or fail to acknowledge their brilliant development. Lara could have joined those ranks. As one of its major selling points, I'm disappointed to say that the evolution wasn't enough compared to the hype. I actually fear that all of this talk about women in the games industry, discrimination, etc. has elevated this character's concept to a level or standard that it doesn't realistically reach. So is it a successful reboot? I would say it's a perfect blueprint for further titles in the franchise. And if we were to look at sales figures, Though it was doomed to miss the unrealistically high sales expectations set by Square Enix. It's a commercial success, read reviews, and you'll see that it's a critical one too, so it must be doing something right. But there's always room for improvement. So that was it, that was the review. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And please feel free to leave your comments and opinions, constructive criticisms. Be sure to debate if you want in the comment section below. I will see you all in my next video. <laughs> Bye!